Now, we have to be careful because that's not politically correct to, to say women and inside. Where those who claim to have figured out the hidden desires of consumers are treated as gurus. We all come from a woman. We all spend nine months inside of a woman. So women are expert in the inside. Uh, translation, when a woman buys a car, the first thing she is looking at is, do they have cup, cup holders? Dr. Clotaire Rapai lives in a baronial mansion in upstate New York. Quality relationship Fortune broken. 500 companies and their advertising agencies flock there to drink French champagne, admire Rapai's many cars, and listen with rapt attention to his insights on the irrational mind of the American shopper. And we have to understand for each product what is the dynamic behind that. What is it that people are really buying there? A trained psychiatrist, Rapai developed a theory that there are unconscious associations for nearly every product we buy buried deep in our brains. One of my discoveries was that when you learn a word, whatever it is, coffee, love, mother, the first time you, you understand, you imprint the meaning of this word, you create a mental connection. And so actually every word has a mental highway. I call that a code, an unconscious code in, in the brain. Corporations love the idea of buying a single key to the psyches of vast numbers of consumers, a simple code that lies behind millions of individual decisions. I have 50 of the Fortune 100 company as clients. Tonight, Rapai has been commissioned by a handful of big companies, like Boeing and Acura, to break the code on luxury. I don't believe what people say. So some people listen to what they say, and they say, well, do you want to buy that? Do you want to do this? I don't believe what people say. I want to understand why they do what they do. I found this word, and with that, I want to understand you guys. This is the word, the right spelling? To crack the luxury code, Rapai conducts a series of focus groups. I'm serious. That's what I want to understand, how you feel about it. And anything for me is interesting. Money. Money! He takes his subjects on what he hopes will be a psychic journey, past reason, through emotion, to the primal core, where Rapai insists all purchasing decisions really lie. We start with the cortex, because people want to show how intelligent they are. So give them a chance. We don't care what they say. When people try to sell you luxury things, what kind of word they use? Well made. Well made. Nothing new there. And then we have a break. Uh, they're usually very happy with themselves. They say, oh, we did a good job, and so on. Oh, then when they come back, then there is no more chairs. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, oh, what is going on here? How come no chairs? And I explained to them that I would like them to try to go back to the very first time they experience what we're trying to understand. Rapai is hunting for our primal urges. He's after what he calls the reptilian hot buttons that compel us to action. It's absolutely crucial to understand what I call the reptilian hot button. My theory is very simple. The reptilian always win. I don't care what you're going to tell me intellectually. Give me the reptilian. I want you to be in a mindset a little bit like the one you have when you wake up in the morning. You'd be surprised to see that things come back to your mind that you forgot for some time for 20, 30 years. It's amazing. The scribbles of consumers in the semi-darkness, half-remembered words and pictures associated with luxury, somehow become Rapai's key to unlocking the luxury code. Once you get the code, suddenly everything starts making sense. I understand why this car sells, this car doesn't sell. You know, I understand why, why a small uh, 29,000 Cadillac cannot sell. No, I understand why, because it's off-code. Over the years, Rapai has told car makers to beef up the size of their SUVs and tint the windows because the code for SUVs is domination. He told a French company trying to sell cheese to Americans that they were off code. In France, the cheese is alive. You never put the cheese in the refrigerator because you don't put your cat in the refrigerator. It's the same, it's alive. If I know that in America the cheese is dead, and I've been studying cheese in almost 50 states in America, I can tell you the cheese is dead everywhere. <laughs> then I have to put that up front. I have to say this cheese is safe, is pasteurized, is wrapped up in plastic. I know the plastic is a body bag. because You can put it in the fridge. I know the fridge is the morgue. That's where you put the dead bodies. Yeah? And so once you know that, this is the way you market cheese in America. It just got easier to just say cheese. 
One one word that kept coming up is in the stories, and I think in, is is a reach, mm-hmm. reaching to the next level. While you know, Clotaire Rapai and his clients continue their quest to crack the code on luxury. It it might be interesting to explore the difference between first class and world class. In Tuxedo Park, New York, Dr. Rapai is also nearing the end of his process. He's ready to unveil the code on luxury. Rapai's clients, having together paid several hundred thousand dollars, are convinced the code will give them a competitive advantage no matter what they're selling. I I, I think the code we discover uh, was there already a long time ago and is going to be around for a generation of generations. We were not allowed to see the actual code. Its secrecy is worth a lot of money to Rapai's customers. The content might vary again, but the structure is the same. But the clients, many of whom have worked with Rapai before, are enthusiastic. So far, you're sold on what he's doing? Yes, I strongly believe in what he's doing. Strongly. Mark Salmon is the vice president for development at Firminiche a Swiss fragrance and flavor designer. We need to absorb absorb the code, check it, create products that are in, in code, try to understand, looking at what is existing, what are the on-code and off-code. It works. Good marketing research works. When we say it works, it means that marketers understand the real need of the customers sometimes unspoken, and they deliver. Give me what I want.